Okay, I got some fluke. Brought some fluke home so I could show you guys how to um, fillet them. So these have been rinsed off from the box. And all right, so the first cut, you hold the fish by the gill, white side first. My first cut right behind this bone right here in the skull. And then you turn the knife on its side. And the tip of the knife is, I'm aiming for right, right here on this spot. And this part of the knife is gonna come out here. So in one swipe, I go down the whole fish and out. So then, so that's one swipe. Second swipe into the backbone. Third swipe up over the backbone. And now the knife was up like this to get over that ridge on the backbone. Now I'm going to tip the knife down like this and use this part of the knife, which is the dullest part of the knife typically, to lay the, the rib bones down that are like that. And I'm going to come at it on an angle like this and lay them down and cut over them like that. And that way we won't have to go back and trim. And then the last cut, which I usually have to do it in two, is just out the other side. And that's a nice clean fillet. Not a, I mean there's a little row of bones right here. And not a whole lot of meat left on this. I missed a little bit right here, but I'm trying to explain it. So the second side, um, again, first cut right up behind the skull and then again you latch your finger into the gill like that and now see this little this little mark right here and that where this fin naturally lays that's the spot right there okay so we're gonna go in right we're gonna be on the bottom side of the backbone and if you notice, I'm pushing down pretty hard on the knife there. And again, we're just aiming for that spot in the tail with the, uh, this part of the knife coming out the side here. So that should have been done in one swipe. You can get all, all four si or both sides off of this with four swipes of the knife each. Eight swipes total. If you make nine, as a production fish cutter, you are not. You're wasting time. So like that, that was no good. There's way too many cuts, but I'm not cutting today for profit. So. And we got all kinds of shrimp in the belly of these things. Wow, look at that. That is something else. Oh, little tiny shrimp. I guess they're grass shrimp, possibly? Don't know. Wow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, I don't think I have much battery left, so I'll do that one more time real fast. I just ran out of battery once there. If I run out again, I'll have to show you how to skin them another time. But this is a quick, quick version. And there's a, an important note about the steel uh, when you go to skin. All right, third oh, battery here. And I don't think this one's going to last much time either. So, um, let's see. I'll show you how to skin real fast. Uh, and this is important with skinning, is the steel. Now, if you're right-handed, you run a knife. This is how I do it. This might not be the right direction to use this steel. But. Okay, well, I had to abandon the phone and now I'm using my, uh, or abandon my camera and now I'm using my phone. But, which means you probably won't see this because I can't upload anything on the computer because uh, I'm very special with computers. So I put the other fillets 
in, on ice. Well, I figured out what to do about the camera. And uh, so I'm just going to do this one start to finish. Right here, I'll show you how to skin with this. Yeah, and, I mean, really any knife can be used to fillet fluke. I prefer this one because it's got a little flex. That one was a little, uh, has, a little too, has a little too much backbone. And this one isn't terribly sharp, but... Now, you know what? It's important when you're filleting fish to not chase the fish around the cutting board. That's the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes I see with people that are just learning how to cut fish. So rinse your fish off, rinse your board off, and pin them down. You know, slippery fish like Totog, we used to fillet them or process them on newsprint or newspaper. And you like, you know, cut one side, turn the page again and again. And uh, it's safer that way because you're not chasing the fish around. The other thing is bring, the, bring your work to the edge of the table, all right? Because your knuckles, like if you're trying to process a fish way up here, your knuckles are going to be into the table and it's no good. So always uh, work on the edge, the edge that's closest to you. And again, first right down to the tail, into the backbone, over the backbone, out the other side. And anytime you cut through bone, anytime you cut through bones, it's bad for your knife. So you want to avoid doing that if you can. But if you do, it's no big deal. You can go back real quick and trim them out right here. fly fest out here today. Alright, so get off of there. There's two nice fillets. And what's he got? He's got shrimp too. Alright, so skinning. And what I was saying before, you run your knife along the steel away from you last and what that does is if you can imagine on the edge of this knife there's a burr that's either pointing down this way or pointing up that way now if you have the burr and it's pointing down that way when you go to skin it's going to cut through the skin every time all right obviously like that if you have the burr down this way it's going to cut into the skin and through it every time so you turn the burr up this way like i said you do that by running it away from you last Another vitally important thing with skinning fluke, maybe not, you know, four or five fish like I have, but um, flatten your flatten your cutting board out. Use the back of the knife, this edge here, and just run it back and forth to eliminate these grooves that are in it. Any high spots will cause a patch in the skin, and anybody that's skinned fluke knows exactly what I'm talking about. And it's not just fluke; it's all fish. Uh, a lot of times cutters will skin on um, a piece of wood because the wood is more giving than this plastic but here I got a little patch on it there's no meat left on the fillet or on the skin rather this that's no big deal there I mean it's no big deal here it's a big deal if you're doing this 10 hours and you got to stop and go back you know, and do this because that's just a waste of time. But for our purposes today, it's no big deal. And there's a little, there should be no bones here if you did the initial filleting, right? And then there's a little line of bones right there. Run from the, uh, right up near the collar, right to about the vent. And just cut that out with a little J cut. Some people like to cut this part out. Now here's another thing, if, if you're not sure if there's bones in your fillet, you can take the tip of your knife and just run back and if you feel it, it kind of like jumps over or, or tings on the, there's tink, tink, tink. But anyway, another thing, with the white side of the fillet, you run the knife 
through it this way. With the dark side, you push it through this way. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. You have to do quite a few of them to get that, get your board flat enough and to get your knife, um, the edge dynamic uh, right. But when you get it right, it goes really fast. I worked for a guy, Jim Liberi, who I'm, I'm not really that good at cutting fluke, to be honest with you. I mean, I can cut them. It's not my favorite fish to cut. But this guy could skin faster than me and another cutter could cut. And he would wait. As fast as we could cut him. And we did speed up to to try to swamp him, right? Let me try this knife here. This one's cutting through. Oh, and this steel. Almost forgot that. So the only reason I'm doing this is because I cut through some bones when I was filleting. Alright, so let's see if this one will work. There's a little bit of bone right there. See how this works. I'll try pulling this one through. Oops. And when you get it just right, and you can rip through them really fast. Yeah, this guy was like a—he was like a skinning machine. This Jim Liberi guy. Good guy. I walked into his work when I was uh, probably 23, and I'd worked in fish my whole life. And those of you who know me know that I started seafood when I was really young I walked into his work didn't not know it my buddy got me a job there or an interview or whatever and not knowing what I was going to be doing he asked me to go to the table and cut and you know I thought I knew something about fish got to the table put a fluke down and it was basically like oh you got that upside down and backwards so I relearned everything under the fine tutelage of Mr. Jim Liberi, and I learned a lot about fish in two years I worked there, a few years I worked there, off and on. So you get the idea, it's just the uh, same thing over and over. When you get into the rhythm you can really rip through them pretty quick. And they look nicer as your knife gets the edge dynamics change as you use it. There's another thing. Every time I move this fillet around, I'm wasting time. This one looks like it got gaffed or something. And these are commercial fish. From a wholesaler. They're not legal sportsman sized fish. No, I mean, some of them probably were. I didn't bother to measure them. They didn't look like it. Yeah, it's uh, May, uh, April, April 29th, I think. So the season's not even open. I just uh, I wanted to share this with you guys. When the season, op season opens, you're not wasting your catch. Not wasting your catch by running over the backbone. I've seen some real hack jobs. And you guys know who you are. You have no business cleaning fish. Well, yeah, you do. You caught it. But, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's, I mean, it's an art, I guess. I'm doing it for a long time. It's hard to watch other people cut fish. It truly is. I've trained a lot of people how to cut fish. And some people have it, some people don't. And the people that don't have it <clears throat> never get it. <clears throat> oh, big patch on that one. So that was from the from this board. Um, so you could just come in from the other side. And in fact, it's probably 
Now each time you steal it, if you're running through the skin, you can increase or decrease the angle to get closer to the skin or, you know, have the, uh, that burr turn a little more drastically so you don't cut through the skin. If, you're, if your cutting board has divots and uh, high spots in it, that can be a problem. Like I said, wood is definitely the best material to, um, to skin on. It's only like, what time is it? I don't even know, it's probably like 12, 10, 10, 30. No, it's probably 12 o'clock. Just saw an old beer bottle over there. I was like, I don't remember carrying a beer up. It's probably got mud in it. All right, well, I think I got two fillets left. There's some bones right there. So without the, the battery changes, <clears throat> I probably could have cut these, what was it, six fish I bought? Probably could have cut these six fish in 10 minutes with uh, an amount of cleanup. I got to bury the, the fish heads in the compost pile yet and clean my cutting board, rinse the fillets all that fun stuff but yeah it's actually I mean it's dirty to do this but you save a decent amount of money by knowing how to do it yourself if you're buying from a wholesaler that is if you buy pre-cut fillets they're gonna really jam you for the process ah right through the skin again damn it yeah I guess I spoke too soon on the 10 minutes huh See how these things would really slow you down if you were trying to rock through 600 pounds of fluke, you know, at 4:30 in the afternoon after standing for 10 hours. No thanks. So if you get one that doesn't have an edge, you just go through the center of it, come out one side. Doesn't matter if it's the uh, the head or the tail, and then grab it the other way and ride through that way. That's it. That's uh, filleting fluke 101. I'll have to cook them one time. You know what I really want to cook for you guys is uh, some bluefish. I have a really good bluefish recipe, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, a guy eats bluefish? Yeah. Yeah, I got a really, really, really good recipe for bluefish. Even the big slammers, if they're uh, processed properly, they are surprisingly mild. Like, really, really excellent recipe. Lady uh, used to come into Bob's Seafood in Haddonfield when I worked there, and she bought the whole table full of mackerel. And, uh, you know, would empty the table every time we'd have it, whole fish. Take them home, process them. I'd only used it for bait, so I asked her what she did with it, and she gave me this recipe, which was awesome, because the lady didn't really speak too much English and wasn't very conversational. I took the time to, uh, nice amount of fillets there out of those six, five, six fish, whatever. Oh, anyway, yeah, she gave me this recipe and it's to this day one of my favorite fish to eat. All right, that's it, 14 minutes, plus what's on the other camera, so not too bad. All right, we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.